Welcome to Slashdot Media's SourceForge podcast, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Sydney Shepard, here at SourceForge and Slashdot Media. The SourceForge podcast is where we discuss software and technology with leaders and change makers in tech. SourceForge is the world's most visited software review and comparison site where B2B software buyers compare and find business software solutions. And joining us today, we have Martin Ballum, the CEO and founder of Pimberly a product information management software that drives powerful e-commerce success. Thanks for joining, Martin. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to chat with you and just learn some more about Pimberly today. Great stuff. So, yeah, so let's honestly just jump right into some of the questions. So could you just first introduce yourself to the podcast and share a little bit with us about the story of how Pimberly was founded? Yeah, sure. So obviously, um, I'm Martin Ballam. I'm the CEO and founder of Pimbly. Pimbly is a SaaS product information management, digital asset management platform. Um, Pimbly started really um, back in sort of 2014 when um, I had a, another business that was in IT managed services. It was um, basically um, doing all the managed services and IT systems for the creative industry. So that's film, TV, um, digital agencies, et cetera. Um, and we were increasingly finding that um, even we as a B2B supplier were wanting to have better product data, better quality of digital assets. And, and the type of tech that we were supplying our customers was very complicated. Um, so, and, and, and we were dealing with all the big brand tech brands, HP, Apple, Dell, et cetera, Avid. Um, and, um, and, and, and we were struggling even with those guys in terms of, you know, the amount of data that they had, the structure that it was in and, and it was all very varied, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, we also had at the same time a small little dev team and, um, we thought, Hey, you know, we looked at the market, we couldn't really see anything that could um, address that issue and certainly not something that was native cloud-based. Um, and so that's why, you know, we started to think about building that for ourselves. Um, but also we had some of our suppliers um, who were really interested in, in what we were going to do and um, sort of, uh, I won't say joint forces or anything, but certainly put their hands up to say, hey, you know, if we can help or if we can be part of it, that would be really cool. So in 2015, um, we decided that we'd deploy some some headcount essentially to actually see if we could uh, crack the problem. Um, and by end of 2015, we'd, we'd pretty much found ourselves with a minimal viable product as far as we could see it. Um, and we got one of our uh, major sort of distribution suppliers to actually, uh, who's still a, a customer today, um, to be the, the beta for that. And, and that's sort of how it all started. It really was from um, myself, I was having that problem and wanting to solve it for ourselves and our supply chain. Um, and then it very rapidly sort of grew in terms of people wanting to see it, wanting to look at it and wanting to use it. Um, and then I, I'd say we, by end of 2016, we decided that this this had legs to stand on its own as a separate product. Um, and, you know, that by end of 2018, um, I'd sold my previous business and uh, so I could solely focus uh, on, on Pimbley and drive it forward. That's awesome. I love to hear how, uh, you know, companies get started and how people kind of find the need for something. So that's cool to hear. You said you started like working in film stuff and then eventually it led you to, to software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, software is really cool. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's, it, yeah, the, the, and the clients are amazing. Um, yeah. But it was really cool in the film industry as well, you know, so, yeah. yeah. But hey, -ho, we have, I mean, we've got some cool customers in that, in that thing, you know, so we've got some customers that deal with, you know, um, uh, um, people that are an adjunct of Disney and things like that, that are from yeah. a merchandising point of view and the commercialization of films. So it's still, still a little bit of uh, dabbling in that industry. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> um, so continuing at kind of like a high level, could you provide a sort of overview to just what Pimberly does and, you know, the different solutions that you offer there? 
Yeah, so I think the, the easiest way to think about what we do is uh, is, is every, everybody knows CRM, customer relationship management platforms. Um, well, well a, a PIM, a PIM dam solution is is exactly the same except for products. It, it really is, you know, we're all about the product um, and it, it's all about having a central repository and, and a central source of truth um, for all your products, information and data. And that can be anything from everybody thinks about you know like um product descriptions product titles um um logistical information like weight dimensions um how many you can get on a pallet etc but it's also um all the uh, all the digital assets so it's all the images it's all the instruction manuals it, um it might be maintenance manuals it could be videos um, it could uh, be 3D CAD files. It's anything in relation to a, a, a product um, is what we actually centralize and store. Um, we then understand, well, where does where does this product information need to go within the actual um, ecosystem? And that could be back into, it could be downstream, it could be feeding product data back down to suppliers, um, or it might be, everybody thinks about um, going you know pushing it to your website uh, which is a big thing but the other areas um, are can be you know if you've got bricks and mortar stores it could be pushing product data to you know the digital shelf ticket or to the um, the pause terminal etc wherever you need product data uh, and in a b2b scenario it could be pushing product data to your sales enablement tools you know that your sales teams have out on in the field as they're uh, explaining to customers the great you know the great benefits and features of the products cool yeah there's a lot of different places that um that tie into that so that's cool that it's all in one spot because there's a lot lot there so with what you said it seems like there could be a lot of different industries and types of companies that find value in these types of offerings so could you just share with us maybe some examples of um those industries or brands and you know if there was a specific one that especially um, was super impacted by being able to use the solution. Yeah, so um, I mean, it, it, as we just said, anybody in the supply chain ultimately has to deal with product data. So um, th there'll be relevance from a PIM for 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 pretty much anybody that deals in relatively tangible products, as in physical products. Um, yeah. So really, but the t probably two. Two or three areas to, to, to call out. One that everybody will know will be anybody that's sort of a retailer selling, a big brand selling, you know, in the high street and online, you know, so, uh, um, you, know, you know, so you can get people like sort of JD Sports um, that you'll see in Times Square selling all Nike, Adidas, etc. Um, mm -hmm. And if you can imagine the amount of um, product data, the number of SKUs and number of products that they have to manage um, and, and also the massive seasonality of it. Um, yeah. In, in terms of you know every 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 sort of uh, autumn and winter or whatever there's a new season um usually there might be an embargo so you know from the different brands that you're selling those products so you can have the data but you can't you can't you know release it you can't put it on your website until the agreed time etc um and also um you're giving your branded experience as well so you're giving your jd sport experience so that will mean that okay i'm bringing all this data in from all these amazing brands and they've all got some great data but i want to turn it into my own tone of voice i want to um make it easy for my customers to be able to um find the product that they want or be able to compare those products from one product to another in a way that they expect of me in my brand as it were um so so that that's one and, and i say the there, there you're dealing with millions and millions of products that yeah. that churn all the time um and and that you know you've got a lot of governance around when you can release them, but also, you know, you want to get things out there um, and you're selling around the world, as it were. So that's that's one area. Yeah. Another area right at the other end of the spectrum will be, you know, the manufacturers, yeah. you know, so where, you know, for example, I could be a manufacturer of those products. Um, and, you know, for me, what I what I need to be able to manage is um, all the all the um, all the design data, all the uh, design sort of criteria, you know, the materials, um, I need to understand, increasingly understand, you know, the uh, environmental impact of my products. So what's the traceability, you know, what are the, 
um, you know, the amount of energy, the amount of water, the amount of um, distance traveled for each of the core materials, all, all that increasingly is getting pulled into a PIM solution um, that then uh, basically turns out and also my then end suppliers are wanting e-com ready um, product data. So my customers and my downstream sales um, sort of, uh, uh, customers are, are saying, well, give us, you know, g give us um, the data in such a way that I can easily and rapidly get it onto my website. So, so it's a to totally different end of the spectrum, um, but both of them have very um, complex needs and uh, a, a requirement for having everything in one place. Yeah, that's interesting. Like when I first, you know, was looking at, you know, PIM solutions, I wouldn't necessarily think about how it works for the like manufacturer and supplier and all that too. So it's cool to hear all the different um, people that kind yeah. of come into play with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, um, a, a lot of people do, do they, they, it's only when you start to think about it and you start to say, well, actually, oh, and by the way, don't forget, I need that in 50 different languages. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, when we do a lifestyle shot, I need a shot with a model in it. Um, I need a, you know, I need a, there are different rules and regulations for different geographies. So I can't, you know, so, you know, and also there's no point um, having a, um, you know, having somebody stood in front of, um, you know, Times Square trying to sell a product to somebody that lives in Paris, you know, yeah. um, it, that doesn't resonate with them. So you want him to have, you know, you want geo uh, relevant uh, images and digital assets as well, you know, so it's it suddenly sort of exponentially gets bigger. Um, and that's when people realize, oh, yeah, I didn't, re yeah, well, how do they manage all that stuff? You know, so, and a PIM, that's how they do it. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you a little later, but it works now to ask you, like, a lot of companies do sell their products internationally, especially as they grow. So kind of what you were just saying, but could you tell us a little more about how Pimberly specifically supports businesses in managing that, you know, product information for global markets, um, especially considering challenges of that localization and the multilingual content management, all that kind of encompasses international yeah so so absolutely if you can so if we set the scene and say well look let, let let's say that you're a global brand a fashion brand and and pretty much you're selling everywhere you know um but let's you know cut it to sort of like europe africa asia um north america you know south america um you know then then probably not only will you um need you know different product um images probably um but also different product descriptions uh, of clearly in different languages um but also you'll probably have different teams you know so not only do you need to store the product information such that it can be multi-layered mm -hmm. as it were but also you need a platform that truly is global and that teams can be able to work um, and do their own uh, thing, as it were, within their gui their brand guidelines, and and be able to go in and um, see as their own, you know, because ultimately at the end of the day, they're they're probably, um, you know, have responsible for their GOP and L, um, and 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 you know they they will want to be able to give their own tone of voice within the brand guidelines. They'll be wanting to optimize you know, the product images or descriptions or videos or whatever that are specific to their um, countries that they're dealing with. Because that's why you do that, you know, because they intimately know their country. They know what people want. They know how much information they want to consume um, and they know how they want to consume it. So you've got, it's, it's not only just being able to store it all, but also being able to allow the teams to be able to operate uh, relatively autonomously, but within a, a sort of a, num a brand governance umbrella. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and definitely, I'm sure, very helpful for a lot of different companies. Like I said, you know, a lot of companies are selling internationally and doing stuff all over the world. So that's awesome. Um, so, you know, switching gears a little bit, uh, how would you say that the digital asset and PIM industry in general is evolving and um, what type of impact does this have on customers of yours? Are there, you know, sorts of emerging trends or changes that businesses should be thinking about going forward? Yeah, so I think um, 
I mean, before pre, oh, and people don't even talk about it much now, thankfully, <laughs> but pre COVID, the big thing was all about in customer intimacy. Um, yeah. And what does that mean? That, that, that means that um, I, you know, you, I'm a consumer, I come to your website um, regularly. Um, so therefore, you know, you, you should start to know me. I'm buying quite a few things from you. Um, and so what you're expecting is that I'm presenting you with, okay, you might have looked for this item, but, but you'll always be then given options, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what um, a consumer is expecting increasingly is that those options are increasingly relevant to them and, and, yeah. uh, and flip it the other way, which is very, only rarely do you get it totally wrong, you know, because that's even yeah. worse, isn't it? You, oh, my God, I've, I've shopped with you for 10 years and I can't <laughs> believe you're showing me those sort of whatever, whatever's important, as it were. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and and so, so that and, and that's sort of come back around, but with a vengeance now um, on the back of AI, because before um, it used to be, well, okay, we'd love to be able to do it, but that means that we've got to write product descriptions, et cetera, that are, you know, it, it, it sort of relevant and intimate to each sort of consumer or each subcategory of consumers, et cetera. And, and actually that's um, commercially not viable. Um, but whereas now, you know, with, um, you know, um, being able to generate uh, product descriptions on the fly, being able to do that in, in mass uh, bulk, as it were, that's very specific to a use case, being able to understand and um, uh, ingest more uh, sort of data from images. So again, you know, when you, when you describe a product, uh, um, most people, if you, if you had the same product, let's say a red dress and you got a hundred people around the world, and you said, give me 20 words that describe that red dress, the overlap would be pretty small. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, maybe red and dress and maybe, you know, the, the sleeve length or whatever. But then they'll, they'll rapidly get into their own local sort of how they describe things, their own lexicon, as it were. Um, and again, you know, with AI now, it, it's, it's enabling it to, to sort of like – commercial make it more commercially viable to be able to say well what are all the different words that describe that somebody could possibly describe this yeah. object as um and why is that important well it's important because if somebody comes on their website they're going to be coming on and and, and searching you know in the language and the lexicon that they know and actually if you don't have it then more often than not you might have products that they wanted but you never surfaced because you they they'd not sort of um, got it connected. And so that's, those are the things that are really sort of pushing ahead at the moment, which is, I will say in summary, it's sort of like being able to do, do the customer intimacy um, now because of AI and product, AI generated product descriptions, and also being able to actually um, allow a, a consumer to find things on your website that you previously you had, but you maybe didn't realize that that's what they were asking for. Yeah. AI is definitely a huge thing these days. So it's interesting to hear how it ties into, you know, all sorts of different industries and yeah. uh, solutions, brands, like everybody can use it in some way now. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting to hear how it works with that. And in continuing off of like talking about the, you know, personalized customer experiences in that way, uh, how do you guys like facilitate the creation of that personalized product experience across uh, multiple different channels. Yeah, so um, what I mean, it's it's relatively uh, straight straightforward in a way in that yeah. um, you know we we would be looking at well where do where where are you wanting to push your product data to what markets um, you know what are the demographics what are the segments um, what are the um, often oftentimes you know it will be seo driven so you'll have your seo technologists or, or experts that will say well, okay for for this market and this segment you know um if we if we're going to rank highly on either the marketplace or google or bing or whatever then you know we need to have these seo keywords in here um and so what we do is bring all that together um and then um relatively on mass generate all their product content uh, for them um, and, and then populate it within 
pimbly so that it's ready to push out to where it needs to be. Um, and, and also being able to do, you know, cause a, a lot of time you don't know whether you're going to get it right or not. Or for example, you can't call which, especially in fashion, which hero image, i.e. the image that you're going to show for that product, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether you get the right colorway or not. So being able to do A-B testing is really important as well. You know, because um, you know, you might have a product that's that's sort of like highly visible, i.e., it gets presented a lot of times on on a website when somebody's looking for something, but it never gets clicked on. So then mm -hmm. you say, well, that's actually high, highly visible, but not very desirable. But if you yeah. suddenly just change out a bit of the either the image or a bit of the text, the text um, that goes with it, then hey, presto, you might find that you've suddenly got a much improved sort of uh, click through rate. Um, and ultimately uh, getting that customer to to buy. Yeah, that's cool. Definitely, I mean, helpful. People are always looking for more sales, so that's good when there's multiple ways to try to uh, test that and get those yeah. sales out. So. And the craziest thing is the consumers are looking for the products for them, aren't they? You know, so I guess yeah. in, a, in a way, what, what, what we're, we're here for the products. We're here to say, we want to find you the home, you know, <laughs> sort yes. of thing, because there are people out there that want you, you know, so yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, in going off of that topic a little bit, what would be like one um, piece of advice or one key message that you would share with potential customers of Pimberly? You know, someone looking for a PIM solution. Uh, what do you wish that more businesses understood about managing that product information of theirs and their digital assets? And, you know, maybe that plays back into that customer experience that you were just talking about. Yeah. Um, a couple of things there, really. One is um, I, I I always have interesting conversations with brands that 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 don't yet um, put as much um, sort of uh, thought into the digital persona of their products, um, i.e., the product descriptions, images, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I try and sort of give an easy analogy to that, which is well. You know, do, do you care of, about the physical packaging of your product? Um, mm -hmm. Do you care what it looks like? Do you care what it feels like? Do you care what's on that physical product packaging? And oftentimes people say, yeah, of course I do. That's part of this selling experience. You know, it's yeah. part of my brand, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then you'll say, well, you know, given that, and I think, you know, in the US and the UK, you know, the stats are that, I think it's 28, nearly 30% of all products bought are bought online now. You know, one in three products bought online. You know, yeah. so, and, and, and even more importantly, when you look at the growth, the growth is from online. You know, yeah. so if you project that forward five or 10 years and you say, you know, in five, 10 years, 50% of products will be bought online. I mean, people buying apartments without looking at them online now, <laughs> don't they? They buy a car without yeah. going, going, you know, so they, it's not just the items we realize today. It's, it's more and more things are getting bought online. Um, so, so the growth is coming from online. So what I would always recommend CTOs and, you know, um, CEOs is, is well, you know, if, if all your growth is coming from online, how much um, thought are you putting into that digital packaging? Mm -hmm. know, and the digital packaging is the images, the videos, the yeah. um, the text, the the you know the how much information are you giving the customers? And then uh, again, increasingly, people are wanting far more clarity and visibility about the environmental other things, etc. So that would be yeah. you, you know the 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 sort of the the main thing thing there. And then the the sort of like the then follow on one of that is that. Uh, you know, um, increasingly people are buying on marketplaces. It's it's the equivalent, yep. of, I'm sure people know, it's the equivalent of going to you, to a mall. Everybody will have their favorite mall near their home. They like it because they know they can park there. They know the security people are really nice. They know all the shops <laughs> that they want to go to and whatever. It's no different when you shop online. You go yeah. where you want to go and where you like, don't you, for, for certain things, you know. And, um, and, 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 and so... You know, if you want to touch as many, if you want to grow and touch as many consumers as possible, you can't ignore marketplaces. And again, that's where the growth is coming from. So, but that then means that, that you have to supply them with more product data in different um, formats and et cetera, and, and abide by their rules. 
um, which again means that ultimately when you come into thinking about product data, yes, you need to PIM, but also think about, you know, the next, you don't put a PIM in and swap it out in a year. It's not the sort of thing. It's, it's more of a lineup. Yeah. It's more like an ERP sort of implementation. So think about it like that. Think about, you know, what, what do I want it to do in five years time? Um, and make sure you buy as you would do if you were putting in an ERP system. Yeah, that, that hearing those stats about how much people are buying online versus in person is crazy. And like you said, the expansion of that going forward will definitely increase. So it makes sense that, you know, how you present your products online is super important. And even like you touched on marketplaces, then it makes me think of even just like people reselling products as well. I've noticed an increase yep. in that of people like presenting the the resell products well in addition to, you know, direct websites where people are buying straight from a brand. So yeah, online yeah. And, is and, definitely and, and, super and, important. Yeah, and the resellers, they you know, a lot of times they they get it a lot a lot quicker than than the brands do because that you know, they have to differentiate themselves. Um, because fundamentally they're selling somebody else's product yeah. and the way they do that is by having, you know, you, I, I know some of my customers, they will redo all the photos, you know, because yep. the, 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 they want to have better photos, you know, they yep. want to have more photographs or they want to have a uh, little video sh showing, you know, some of the, um, uh, details, you know, and so, um, and, and, and that's all about the confidence to buy, you know, is this going to be what I want yep. it to be, you know, and, um, and yeah, some of the resellers do a better, do a way better job than the brands themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know when I'm looking and researching or not researching, but when I'm looking to buy products, whether it be clothes or something else online, like the whole experience and all the photos and all that stuff is definitely important for when I'm deciding like if I actually want to get it or not. So yeah, that definitely yeah. makes a lot of sense. Could you now explain a little how Pimberly's technology specifically streamlines that product information and the, you know, the digital asset management for businesses and what makes Pimberly stand out in comparison to some other, you know, products or solutions that are doing the same thing? Yeah, so um, I mean, fundamentally, you know, the, the, this is you, you know you're replacing human effort here. So, so yeah. before PIMs were around, and, and most people listening to this will, if they if they actually are involved in getting product data uh, or getting products listed onto websites um, or onto B two B portals um, or or wherever they need to get them, you know, they, they'll probably be battling with, you know, some really pretty big spreadsheets that they're using, you know, pulling in data from uh, various different um, systems and suppliers, um, uh, uh, sort of manipulating that data, getting into a format that they can use, and then um, adding to that data um, before they, they can then push that data to where they need it to be, and and, and what um, a PIM solution does is that it, it it gets rid of all that sort of manual processes, but also it allows you to have the governance around it um, in terms of you know who's done what when, um, what what if I need to roll back, you know what if we made yeah. a mistake, um, how can I see what um, description I had on my website um, at this point in time. You know, because somebody's yeah. queried something, you know, um, and said, well, that's what it, I'm, I'm telling you now. That's what it said on this date. When I looked at it, you've changed it in between. So it's all, all those sort of things. And um, and also being able to automate some of the things, uh, you, you know, whether it be creating a product title, creating product descriptions, whether it be um, transforming images, you know, so that's another big thing. You know, you've got your product images, um, you'll have your uh, image that comes from your studio, um, but all the all the platforms that you want to push your product to, um, they'll all have the, all have their specific requirements um, of image, what size it is, what file type it is, the naming convention of what that image is, so that I can ingest it and know what to do with it. Um, and also, it might be that actually, you know, I'm only I only allow white backgrounds, you know, etc. So. Again, from a digital asset point of view, it's transforming all that automatically. Um, and also um, being able to 
help the customer with great, if you like, grading of the product. You know, so um, you know, you would internally uh, be able to say, well, this is what good looks like, and good might be, well, I've got ten bullet points, um, I've got you know a product description that's six hundred sort of characters or words long or, or whatever your rules are. I've got a product title that's this, that, and the other. I've got my SEO keywords are in or they're not in my product description. And again, within a Pimbly system, um, you know, you can be setting all those up as uh, uh, grading attributes and you can quickly see which of the products that are, uh, are scoring highly against the individual metrics and which of the products that aren't. And then what you can do, because everybody's restricted, you know, but in, effectively by, you know, sort of the amount of time they have, you can say, well, okay, well, which are my highest margin products or which are the products that aren't selling? Is there any correlation between, let's say, how many images I have um, yeah. or, you know, the grade or, or the com product content um, and um, the fact that it's not selling or, you know, actually I've got some great product content here and uh, for these high margin things and it's selling really well why don't I spend the time, you know, sort of re-going over these other high margin products and see if it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I like how you're able to compare or see which um, products might have similarities, like you were saying, in relation to the higher selling versus lower selling products and, you know, find those little things that are different. Um, definitely something that I can see would help many businesses yeah. as they're trying to sell their products. Also, that historical data of having um, in there, like past, like you were saying, past descriptions, past images, I'm sure um, also would be very useful, you know, as yeah. products and as the, the businesses evolve. Yeah, I mean, for our B2B customers that, that are more technical products, um, so that could be anything from, let's say, tools or white goods like washing machines, etc., you know, they might have a requirement to create a technical, what would they call a product data sheet or a technical product data sheet or a spec sheet. Yes. Um, yep. and, and, and Pimbly can auto-generate these. Um, oh, wow. So, you know, we'd agree with the customer, a template, all the data, all the images, all the, you know, um, sort of line drawing designs, et cetera, are held within Pimbly. Um, Pimbly then creates those dynamically. Um, and so again, you know, if any data ever changes, Pimbly will automatically regenerate that spec sheet um, and, all, and make sure that the, un, that the spec sheet that's available at any point in time has the most up-to-date information, but also any changes, the old spec sheets are archived, you know, so yeah. that you know, again, at any point in time, which spec sheet was live at that point in time. That's very cool. I'm sure that takes a lot of time off of, uh, you know, people's hands if that those spec sheets are, you know, generated for them based off the information they put in. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's certainly a lot easier than oh, trying to a trying to find that product spec sheet on a, a Word doc or a yeah. PowerPoint or whatever you've done it on, and then having to go in and and change it and then saving it again and everybody has their own different method of saving and what they how they how they file and archive things don't they and uh, yeah. yeah so again you know it just moves it um away from being islands of information mm -hmm. and, and sort of tacit knowledge in people's heads to actually being in you know one central source of truth that's have, that, that's governed um and and that's available to the entire enterprise yeah especially for fast growing brands that seems very helpful to store everything in one spot and not get lost uh, early on. Um, and then, I mean, a lot of companies are selling across many different channels and not just one place. So how do you see kind of the role of FIM systems evolving in the context of that omni-channel retail and e-commerce growth? And how has Pimberly adapted to these changes? You've touched on, you know, a lot of things that Pimberly has done, but if there's anything specific uh, to that, could you share with us that? Yeah. I mean, I'd say this is probably this one of the single most um, important reasons why a customer, uh, sorry, a retailer, let's say a retail customer would buy a PIM, would be mm -hmm. the omni-channel. Um, yeah, because, um, you know, they're they'll have an omni-channel strategy um, and th they'll basically, you know, they'll be wanting to have consistency of product data across all that, pro uh, that channel, all the channels. 
um, they might be, you know, listing the products um, in many, many different geos um, yep. in many, many different marketplaces. All of those marketplaces, as we've said before, uh, have got their own requirements in terms of, you know, product data, how they want it, what validation yep. rules they want, how they want it categorizing, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and okay, if you've got, you know, if, if maybe you've got three or four different channels, you could probably manage that um internally you know on, on a bunch of spreadsheets you know you probably have one spreadsheet per channel and i'm sure people listening will be nodding at that you know yeah. in terms of yeah i've got my amazon spreadsheet i've got my ebay spreadsheet i've got my website spreadsheet you know and uh, yeah. or and if you've got point of sale retail or whatever that's probably some other department as it were and certainly if you've got a catalog um that, again that would be the design department and and sort of typically find that they they they, they sort of had the same product data at one point, but quickly they've sort of diverged, as it were. Yeah. Um, but then if you multiply that and say, well, no, we want to, you know, and again, who I've never met anybody that doesn't say, I want to grow. So I meet CEOs mm -hmm. and say, what, you know, fundamentally, what do you want to do over the next five years? Oh, you know, I want to, I want a 2X, I want a 3X, I want a 10X, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, well, then if you look at that, and then I've just said, you know, hacking back to some of the things we've said before, if you if you want a two, three, four, ten X, you know, then the only way you're really going to do that is by doing sort of on the assumption that we ignore putting prices up. Yeah. So yeah, you could put your prices up ten X, but I think you probably wouldn't sell unless you were I don't know, in you know, De Beers or whatever, you wouldn't sell a lot. Um but um but but so then therefore you're down to two things. So if I can if I can either sell more products you know, mm -hmm. and or I can sell to more people. You know, yeah. I know that sounds really simple, but 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 both of those things you need to be able to do if you are going to grow your business. Yeah. Um and, and so what that means obviously is that you're either going to be adding increasingly adding more products, more different category of products. And you'll see this with fashion brands that move into being lifestyle brands. So not only are they selling you, you know, um sort of sort of you know clothing but they've now started to sell you know uh, um, sort of soft furnishings or candles or mm -hmm. whatever you know it's all, yep. so, so that's a whole new category for them so you've been pushing the category out um and adding more products that way you know are you trying and or you know you're moving into well i i, I want to uh, you know, you identified in your home markets, there are certain segments that don't buy from you. You don't know why, but, and then you realize why, and then you try and do something about that. That might include a completely different website that's just yeah. focused at them, you know, um, you know, so you might have a swimwear lines in a fashion thing and you think, well, I'm going to launch my own swimmer website or whatever. Um, or it might be pushing out um, internationally. Um, and again, we talked about that in terms of different tone of voice, different images, whatever. So, so yeah. really, all that omni-channel, you know, if, if you're going to grow, then it all comes back to, you know, an exponentially expanding complex product data problem. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in tying into when you're selling across many channels, um, something that companies I'm sure are thinking about is like that data quality and the consistency across all of, um, you know, their e-commerce platforms. So how would you say that you guys ensure that high quality data management across all those different channels? Yeah. Um, so that, again, there's, there's, there's some of the boring things, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, data governance, you know, so for example, um, I, I will not let this product get listed um, until it has these attributes or this data um, yeah. completed. You know, um, and again, we, we do, you know, when you're using spreadsheets, et cetera, or, or, or not a PIM or, or a homegrown PIM or whatever, you know, some of the issues that we come across regularly is that, you know, they'll find that either they'll have listed a product and it's got missing or wrong data, or it's even got notes in there. We've had some customers where it's like, it's got the, you know, it's like got your manager's notes in, don't like this, rewrite it. and, yeah. and it's, so, like, get That's onto, not good you know, to have. and it's not 
yeah no I, I know well um yeah. but um so yeah so you've got that element of it which is you know the, the really simple stuff which is you know making sure that products are complete um uh, before they actually get um, pushed out to the website but also the other side of that which is what which ones aren't you know which aren't complete which areas are not complete where are the bottlenecks you know is it i'm, I'm my um images i don't have the images i don't have the videos or is it that actually you know i've got lots of um static data like dimensions etc missing you know um or 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 for example it's come in but but we've looked at it and you know it's um there are rules set up to say well no it's outside the tolerance level this cannot be possibly right so for example you know there's a dimension in there that clearly is not right um and and so that's the sort of thing again i say the boring stuff that a pim can do which is all around data governance etc um the other thing is more around you know when okay so you got your products you got them listed and whatever well guess what you know people want to start doing sales campaigns you know yep. so they want to start saying and let everybody knows about black friday nowadays so it, it's it's usually it's a massive effort on a company to say right what are the products that we're going to go in the black friday sale what's the marketing copy are we going to do some different images for example um you know and certainly yes we're going to do different pricing and getting all that yeah. ready etc you know and making sure that you're only sort of launching it at the time that you want to launch it and then the other thing is taking it off sale you know so and again that's where a, a good pim like pimbley you can you know get all that done you can have those additional uh, it's a, a, what we call them scopes so additional variants which will be a sales variants so with different images different um copy different pricing whatever and you set your payment and say on that day i want you to flip to this uh, my black friday um copy and images and pricing etc and on this day i want you to flip back you know so again it allows you to uh, manage your sales campaigns um less frantic i won't say it will be won't be frantic because black friday is i'm sure very frantic for everybody but it'll certainly yeah. be less frantic yeah and i mean these days too i see like i mean i get so many different newsletters from brands and people are doing sales all the time not even on just like the big yeah. holidays anymore so um ensuring that data quality through the transition of all those different sales and stuff is definitely important to make sure everything you know stays uh streamlined throughout and yeah i mean it makes me think i mean just even as a a regular person and consumer of many different products and other people i'm sure also can see that like the need the need for speed and product launches and updates or sales is more crucial than ever just because of how quickly businesses are moving in those scenarios. So how does Pimberly help companies accelerate their time to market? Um, because that kind of ties into what you were just talking about as well. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where, um, you know, this is probably one of the major, if not the top one in terms of when people, you know, when people are calculating their ROI for a PIM, speed to market is usually the number one that comes out you know yep. and, and what does that ultimately that means you've got more selling days so, so there's a couple of things that you've got more selling days and being able to be agile so uh, agile could mean that you know um it could be as simple as um we for whatever reason somebody's now calling this color a different name <laughs> you know so um let's say a celebrity is out there and suddenly she said that I, I, you know I, i'm rubbish on color so don't, don't, you know she, he or she has called it marv and it was and you've got it listed as purple or whatever yeah. right so the you suddenly got the marketing department saying look we've got a, you know everybody's going to want to buy one of these we've got to change all the copy and get that marv in into the copy and strip out purple or whatever um yeah. You know, you can do that super quickly uh, with a PIM. You know, you literally would, you know, uh, go in and, and do a find and replace, bush, gone, done. Everything's done, as it were. And and also, don't forget, with the government's point of view, you know exactly what you've changed, who changed it, when they changed it, et cetera. Um, so from that point of view, you know, makes you super agile. The other thing as well is in terms of we had a product that we had a customer that and it was um a really 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 hot summer and they did they sold uh, outdoor clothing um mm -hmm. and they found that a lot of people were hitting the website for hydration rucksacks the rucksacks with the 
the water bottles in. Yep. Um, but but they were also finding that um, you know the search wasn't it wasn't great on that. You know they'd not been optimized optimized for that, um, and so they were had, customers were hardly seeing any of the products that they had. Um, and so what um, they were allowed to do on, on Pimbley, you know, was be able to, so across all the products, they were multi-brand retail, retailer. Um, they knew that there are certain products through the manufacturer's product codes that were hydrated. They knew, obviously, if it said it in the title or in the product mm-hmm. description. Um, and so, so what we did was very quickly be able to run those filters, come up with all those products, create a new category um, within Pimbley, um, and then have a basically be able to push to the website when you went on to you know the the left hand uh, sort of search and you went into rucksacks to click rucksacks it then had hydrated yes no you know type thing so again that was done literally within an hour you know so no. it's that being able to react like that whereas if you're doing the spreadsheets what that is is that effectively yeah. <laughs> is I'm inserting a new column and I'm yep. going down every product and saying yes no. You know, so so um, so that's that's uh, that's one thing, and then obviously, you know, in terms of being able to get, pro- especially again, if you're a multi-brand retailer, um, getting uh, new stock in, new product in, and getting it online as quickly mm-hmm. as possible can can mean that you can, you know, you can probably cut down. I know we talk to customers, and and usually they'd be talking in weeks to get yeah. from start to finish and getting a. a, a get, getting the product in, getting all the descriptions done, getting all the bullet points done, getting it tested. Will it go to the website? Will it fail because of some data issue? Have I got all the images? Have I got this, that, and the other? Um, and you can literally get that down into hours. If all the data's there, you know, you can get it out, or it can be easily created, then it can be literally hours and you're on there and you've probably got, you know, a good two or three weeks ahead of your um, rivals in terms of being able to get a product out there on on sale yeah that definitely sounds like it would be very useful especially for i mean we've talked about a couple times but larger brands that are having you know many new products coming in all the time or needing to update things often a huge time saver so that's that's awesome and then in relation to kind of that uh you know many businesses are also using like tech stack and having to integrate with other systems um, with their, you know, their products and all their approaches that they're doing. So uh, could you just talk a little bit about how you guys approach integration with some of those other, um, you know, companies that people need to integrate with and, and what are the usual systems that most uh, people are using to integrate? Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, uh... Ultimately, a PIM is pretty useless if it doesn't integrate with something. And, um, you know, and and so really nearly always will be, as a minimum, will be integrating to an ERP or a PLM if it's a if it's a manufacturer um, and for sure will be then pushing product data to um, either their website or if it's B2B, it might be to B2B portal. Um, and obviously, if it's a retailer, it'll be their retail websites um, and marketplaces, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. But also, if they do a lot of multi-language, um, whilst Pimbly can do language translation native within Pimbly, um, they might have their own tone of voice or it might whatever. So we might be pushing a feed and integrating with um, their chosen sort of language translation service and then pulling mm-hmm. in that back in on the other side. Um, we might be integrating with retail point of sale systems um, into uh, whether that's for digital shelf tickets or for the digital signage that you see as you come to your uh, things. So we're, we're and, 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 and from the outset as a PIM, you knew that actually you, you, uh, standalone you're going to be fairly uh, you know a nice a nice database but ultimately not very useful to a business so it always has to integrate um so we you know we we are api first you know so you know all all when customers see our products uh, and see the ui anything that you can see on our ui is available via our our, via our apis um and um you know certainly in the, the the land of composable you know um, that is where you know most people in terms of where they want to go non-monolithic and, and have best of breed solutions 
for each different element. One bit would include a PIM, another might be a CMS, or definitely an econ platform, etc. Um, mm -hmm. So again, you know, so our our, it, it, our preferred methodology is um, you know um, integrating via API and also. Um, where it's important to us, um, uh, whether that's usually sort of the e-com side of thing and the ERP e e side of things, then we'll develop some more some more sort of management tools around that internally as well, so that we can see because you know just because you can open your API and, allow, and make it available, um, and to be able to go and pull data or push data. Um, it really is. There's a lot more about as most people that that, that understand the um, connection, connecting systems. There's a lot more to it than that in terms of, you know, um, how much traffic are you sending to the receiving system? Can it can it receive all that traffic? What do you yeah. do if it can't? Um, mm -hmm. What if there's a what if it um, if there's a fail? What do you do? How do you surface that? How do you um, take the error codes, make that so that it's um, visible to the admin person and they can see, well, what was the problem? Why didn't that um, particular product list? Um, and, and so, yeah, it's from our point of view, it's a big part of a PIM um, is being able to integrate. And, and so we, we've done it, as I say, API first and then develop the sort of the tools around it to be able to understand when things are happening and be able to optimize for each individual system that we're um connecting to yeah that's awesome sounds nice and personalized which is great for for businesses um switching topics a, a little bit back to something that you touched on earlier um was talking about like sustainability and ethical practices and a lot of brands and companies these days are definitely focusing on that um, so how do PIM solutions help companies manage and communicate those sustainability efforts through their product information? Because I know that that's typically something that brands are very excited and proud to communicate when that is something incorporated into their um, products. So yeah, how do, how do PIM solutions help with that? Well, ultimately, um, what we allow them to do is to pretty much store unlimited different types of data against a product so um so what you can do is and, and also go down multi layers so what what yeah. ultimately what you what what if you if we take something that's easy to understand like this shirt that i'm wearing mm -hmm. um normally you know in in a pim um for a retailer you would literally have this as a skew this would be the the bottom element of it which is it's a size whatever it is um white cotton the shirt button down whatever um but but when you start getting into and some of our customers that have started getting into more deeper um let's say uh, uh, auditable um uh, um sustainability it's then saying okay well what are the individual components of that item you know and so if i'm saying that you know this is made in the usa Mm -hmm. well is it is it just constructed in the usa or genuinely how much of it was made in the usa now yep. you know so and and so certainly what we're seeing is that um some some um brands etc are, are, are starting to say well okay we we can sort of deconstruct this you know i've you know it, it's probably got about 20 components you know including things like your labels that are in there that's a different yeah. component as well and the mm -hmm. ink that's printed on the label the buttons for sure the collars the inserts the collars all that sort of thing um, and being able to say the cotton obviously um the the, the thread that it's sewn together with it yeah. is saying right okay well can can i go the next level down what are the individual um, constituents of it where do they come from you know, so can I truly say that this is made in the USA? And what does that mean? Yep. And can I actually say to you, you know, actually, yeah, because what consumers aren't stupid. They don't expect everything to have come from one from the USA, for example, yep. or from the UK or from France or whatever, you know, yeah. but they'll trust you more if you say hey you know what you can actually go down you can see everything. But you know what, you know, the buttons, uh, they come from China. You know, the pro that uh, you know it, it's going that next level down with the product data is what we're finding uh, that, that that we're 
that customers are, are, are looking to do to, to be able to make claims and substantiate really claims. Um, and then the next level below that then is, well, what is the money, what's involved in the manufacturing? You know, how much people are, you know, especially with things like jeans, how much water has been consumed in making them, you know, how much yeah. energy, you know, whereabouts, what are the miles traveled per component? And then so that's sort of like then starting to creep into it. And again, a, a, a PIM, because of the way that it works, uh, you can pretty much, um, well, first of all, it is all about the product anyway, so it should live in the PIM. But fortunately for PIMs, um, because it has to deal with a lot of unstructured data like images, et cetera, it, it's usually super easy to actually say, well, you know what, I, I can go down as many layers as you want. You, you know, there's nothing that you can throw at me that I can't, I can't actually capture and manage. Yeah. Um, and, and that's where, you know, from a sustainability point of view, we're enabling a lot of sort of brands to be able to say, yeah, I, I know where my product comes from and yes. I know some of the environmental things. How they then surface that to the consumer is is probably a more interesting thing. Um, and that's probably more, you know, that what certainly brands are doing that themselves, but you can see like in the EU, you know, with the, with the product passports, et cetera, the, the, it will definitely be, coming down the road where there'll be certain sort of um, standards, you know, um, yeah. in terms of, you know, uh, uh, a bit like, um, uh, I, I think ultimately my, my view is it also, I don't know if you, in, 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 in the EU, you, when you, when you sell a food item, it's got all the different components in it, in the yeah. little wheel, uh, like a little segue type thing. And I think that's probably where they'll go with uh, the environmental on things like fashion, et cetera. So, right this is the different areas of that product yeah that's that's interesting and makes sense um a lot of people are interested in that and learning where everything is coming from it's also interesting to hear because i mean people who are not in like a, a product creation you know or like in a industry like this there, it's crazy how many pieces go into one item like you're talking about like the shirt yeah. you know there's so many different pieces all coming from different places i mean sometimes they come from the same but um that is yeah just yeah. cool to think about and yeah. nice that you can store all that information there and then like you've talked about throughout this podcast is that information will be there uh historically going forward so yeah that's that's awesome that you guys are um able to do that and help with that and then <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> clear my throat in relation to or i guess in addition to being able to include all of the ethical you know pieces and sustainability pieces what are some other things that pimberly does to stay ahead of the curve in terms of innovation and customer satisfaction um, as this industry is becoming more and more competitive and people are learning more of the need to have a pim system in place yeah, so um, I mean, from from Pimberley's point of view, um, you know, one of the things that we hold um, sort of quite dearly is that we, you know, we don't care what type of product data it is, whether it's structured or unstructured, and um, we want we want to have a holistic solution. So it doesn't matter, you know, um, you know what the data is that you're having to store we should we should be able to store that and also be increasingly be able to manipulate that data you know automatically so that you we just know what the endpoint system needs and we'll yeah. we've got the you, you will store the um if we talk about an image because it's easy to understand we'll store the highest version of the highest quality of that image so it might be a tiff or whatever um and we will auto we'll we know what the um the, the end point needs we'll sort that out you know you don't have to worry about that we'll just automatically do it um so it, it's been able to do those things it's also been able to um increasingly sort of um be able to uh, uh, categorize products for you so uh, um just from the images you know so understanding yeah. you know um so I've just ingested uh, an image, um, you know, of, of a, a dress or a skirt or whatever, or, or, a, or a blouse top. Um, I know where it is. I know where its sleeve length is. I know where it's got, you know, buttons or not. I know, I know whether it's uh, the style, etc. 
And again, you know, it, it, it's being able to automate that or as a minimum, give the person that's having to categorize that product additional suggestions because, you know, individual humans by their nature are relatively biased. You know, we talked before about, um, you know, product descriptions and, 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 and if you ask somebody or 200 different people to describe the same thing, they'd, 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 you maybe get three or five three or four yeah. or five things that are the same, but then it expand out as it were. And again, you know, being able to do that. Um, and, and also it used to be that product descriptions and images, it used to be a once and you're done. People were like, oh my God, I've got 10,000 products to get descriptions. So I'll, you know, get them on the thank you for that. And then they forget about it. Well, now, of course, you know, it, it can be dynamic. Who says that they can't change if it's not working, if it's, you know, if there are new keywords, that SEO keywords that you need in there, you know, um, we've got the capability now to change that on the fly, as it were. So no longer does a, a description have to just be there, done and be static. It can be dynamic and it can be changing for different use cases and for d certainly different demographics, etc. So, again, being able to um, sort of optimize for the ultimate sort of end end consumer um, to to basically make sure that that product's more, uh, it, you know, you can you can discover it. Uh, it gets discovered more. Um, it it becomes more appealing to the consumer and gives them increasingly all the information that they need to feel confident to buy. You know, whether that yeah. be you know, um, the, you know, the environment that it needs to go in with the dimensions, whether it be, I, I care about whether this is, you know, it's ethical principles of this product. Um, you know, so it's just being able to supply, you know, everything that a, a consumer needs in the language and the style that they um, feel at home with to um, yeah. make sure that ultimately, uh, you know, that they, they, they buy and they buy the right product. Because again, on the other side yeah. of it, you don't want them to return it, you know. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want them to be advocates, right? You know, you want them to yeah. buy, be able to find what they want, and be able to buy it and think, "I want to go back there." And, and yes. even better, I'm going to tell my friends. Yes, definitely. I mean, very, very important for businesses as they try to expand and grow and sell more stuff. So maybe some of those things that you just explained could kind of tie into this uh, this next question. Super brief, um, just maybe, you know, 30 seconds. Could you give us what the, the main key factors that someone should consider when they are choosing a platform that is right for their needs for a PIM solution? Yeah, um... So I'd say, um, how many different marketplaces uh, do you need to, to, to get your product data to? Um, it would be, you know, does it need to have multi-language? Um, think about five years forward. Don't just think mm -hmm. about today. Yeah. Um, and um, determine whether our, whether this is the, so we only do PIM. Pim Dam solution. So, so is yeah. is is this a specialist product, or is this just a module um, of a big, large suite of products? Um, that those are the things usually. And and do you, do your home be spend some time to do your homework. You know. Yeah. So and and we we have lots of um, uh, sort of information on our website, including you know sample RFPs and things like that. So to make life easier, but. But it will help you understand, um, or that somebody thinking about it, understand the certain things that they need to, that they should be thinking about that might not, because it might be new to them. It might be new to them. So they won't know yeah. what to ask, probably. Yeah, definitely. That all makes sense. And then finally, final question. Are there any new products or features or updates on the horizon that you didn't get to speak about so far in this podcast that you might be? excited about um well i'm always excited about the stuff <laughs> that we're doing but yeah. um I, I mean obviously one of the things that um we've been so we've been looking at the ai in terms of you know understanding images and being able to describe that image and whatever and then we've got the ai yeah. that's sort of creating these product descriptions whatever and uh, one of the things that we've been running um in our beta in our r&d lab is actually not doing 
anything other than giving it images and telling it to populate a website. Mm. Um, so, so you know, and, and, and it's not quite there yet, but that is yeah. really interesting. You just say, yeah. here's all the images. You might have to tell it the brand, you know, of the product yeah. or whatever. Um, and obviously it's, it, and at the moment it's far better at fashion, homewares and jewellery than more technical products like tools and uh, drills yeah. and things like that. But yeah. it is really, really interesting seeing what it actually did. So I know humans just, there you are, there's a bunch of images, populate yeah. that website. You know, that's that's been really exciting. So we'll see. I can see that, that that's probably where, where it's going to go soon. Yeah, that's definitely very interesting. I, I love, I mean, even just for random regular things, I love throwing it into AI and see what it comes out with. And it's crazy how yeah. um, accurate they are getting. Um, so that's definitely yeah, yeah. an exciting no, it's, thing. It's, exactly. It's, it, it, the only issue is obviously, you, 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 know, you know, where it doesn't get it quite right. You yeah. Know, so, but it <laughs> is amazing. Then you little tweaks. About, Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's where, that's where us humans are coming, fortunately. Exactly. Exactly. We always have a need for humans in some sense. So get yeah. AI a little bit and then take that and make it into what you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And for people interested in learning um, more about Pimberly or getting in touch with you, where can they find some more information online and what would be the best way to contact you guys at Pimberly? Yeah, so uh, if you just go to pimbley dot com, you'll see right on there that there's um you can book a de you can book a demo, book an appointment anytime, um, and it doesn't have to be you know if you just want to talk to us, you can. We've got lots of um, information uh, on our resources, you know, so everything from you know how to build a business case for a PIM, how to buy a PIM. We've even yeah. published on there because we're not you know there's other people and there's some some great PIM solutions out there, and we've even got a paper that explains all the different PIM solutions as well. So you don't have to go researching yourself if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> and we've got lots and lots of videos um, of how to, what to do, how Pimbly does it, you know. Um, so awesome. if, you, if you are in the market for a PIM, um, even if it's not PIM that you, Pimbly that you choose, you know, you would find everything probably that you need to understand what a PIM can do on Pimbly's website. Awesome. You heard him. Go to Pimberly.com. And thank you so much for your time today, Martin. I loved learning more about Pimberly and PIMS in general, and I'm sure our listeners did as well. Okay. Thank you. Been a <laughs> pleasure. Yeah. And thank you all for listening to Slashdot Media SourceWord podcast. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the upcoming B2B podcasts that we have planned for you. Catch you in the next episode.